You've got times and seasons in your hands. You call for light out of darkness. You 
don't need a man to be the God you are. Oh, you have chosen to call us your own. Oh, you've got times and seasons in your hands. You call for light out of darkness. You don't need a man to be the God you are. And all you have chosen to call us your own. For you are God from beginning to the end. There is no place for argument. You are God all by yourself. From beginning to the end, there is no place for argument. You are God, you are God all by yourself. Hey, you are God, you are God. From beginning to the end, there is no place for argument. You are God. So we say, Cabia, O CEO. Cabia, O CEO. Cabia, O CEO. You are the God, you are, you are, you are the God of heaven and the earth. Cabia, You are the most high, oh 
praise the Lord. Good morning, brothers, sisters, fathers. Okay, now afternoon. <laughs> good afternoon, everyone. It's a good day. God gave us showers of rain for a moment, and uh, it's time to say bye-bye to the rain. And it has gone where it should go. So, we can get ourselves ready in the next three, four minutes. Thank you. My heart was hot within me while I was amusing. The fire burned. Then I spoke in my tongue, Lord, make me to know my days and what is the measure of my days that I may know how frail I am. Indeed, you have made my days as hand breaths, and my age is as nothing before you. Surely, every man at his best state is but, is but vapor, Selah. Surely, every man walks about like a shadow. Surely, they busy themselves in vain. He heaps up riches and does not know who will gather them. And now, Lord, what do I wait for? My hope is in you. Deliver me from all my transgressions. Do not make me the reproach of the foolish. I was mute. I did not open my mouth because it was you who did it. Remove your plague from me. I am consumed by the blow of your hand. When with rebukes you correct man for iniquity, you make his beauty melt away like a moth. Surely every man is vapor, Selah. Hear my prayer, O Lord, and give ear to my cry. Do not be silent at my tears, for I am a stranger with you, a sojourner as all my fathers were. Remove your gaze from me, that I may regain strength before I go away and am no more. This is the reading of his word. We shall rise for the next hymn, O God of Bethel, on item 5, page 5. Two. Our souls are 
such blessings from thy gracious hand. Our own prayers employ, and thou shalt be a chosen God. Seated now, as we call on Labo Jatmisho to handcall the biography of the late Chief Dr. Edmund Abiola Akinosho. The biography of Chief Dr. Edmund Abiola Akinosho. Dad was born on a quiet, dull evening of 18th February 1933 in Dr. Akiola Majas Hospital. Gaba Square at Ika Akoni, Lagos, to Emmanuel Labode Akiosho and Susanna Adenike Akiosho Niking. His mother had Sierra Leonean parentage, but grew up in Lagos. She was a teacher, seamstress, and a firm, no nonsense mother at home. She brought up all her children with firmness, to be obedient and hardworking, but she died at the age of 55 years. Dad was just about 11 years old. He attended lesson at Dubu, was a choir boy at church, member of the Boys Brigade and Boy Scout. This was the story until he was transferred to the Kindergarten School of Baptist Academy in Broad Street, Lagos. In front of the school, on the other side of the road, was the building of the government press where his father worked. His father was a very unassuming man from the Republic of Benin. The Akiosho's originated from Oyo long, long time ago and migrated down to Port Novo, uh, the Republic of Benin. Then it was called Dahomey. The French spelling of Akiosho, O-S-H-O, is C-H-O. So in the French spelling of Akiosho is Akin, Akin, Akiocho, C-H-O. And years ago, my dad decided, amongst other reasons, to change from the Yoruba pronunciation and spelling to the French pronunciation and spelling. But that was that for you, a radical. I kept mine to the Yoruba spelling. His father was a printer, worked in the government press, and became the superintendent of press on retirement from service in 1936. He was devoted to dad, guiding his path and decisions as he advanced in age. He lived till the age of 93 years. Dad remembers that being near his office was an advantage because at break time, he would cross over from school to his father's office to have his lunch break which was always packed in his father's lunchbox. Hence, they were very close. Things changed very quickly for dad after his mom died in 1944. He was then brought up by his sisters and father. In 1946, he was transferred to Abekuta Grammar School and stayed on there until 1951. The principal of the school was the late Reverend I. O. Ransom Kuti, a disciplinarian of the highest order. It was not easy for him to settle down, but he enjoyed it. According to dad, the science classes were of very high standards. The school had then Dr. Esu Awokoya 
and the twin brothers, the Oye Wales, in charge. They were first class science teachers. The study of science meant so much to him because he always wanted to be a medical doctor since the age of five. He got up to a stage where during his playtime, he would look for frogs and lizards to play with, kill and dissect them, and later throw them away when the smell and decay set in. He got punished several times for this. In 1951, Dad left school as his father wanted him to have a taste of another life. He was selected to attend an interview and took a test at the Department of Marketing and Exports, ICOE. He got the job as a third class clerk in accounts and within a short period, he made rapid progress and enjoyed the work as he made new friends. He spent most evenings at the size evening classes in King's College, Lagos, and Onikan Center on school days, or non, or, or, at Onikan Center. On non-school days, he would go swimming and play squash. After about two years, he resigned from work to prepare for his journey abroad. In 1953, it was planned for Dad to meet his sister, Alfreda, at the end of her studies in London. And while, while she returned home, he was to stay on for training on whatever he had chosen. He arrived in London and was well received by his sister. They lived in Hampstead, North London. According to dad, in the 1950s, it was like a hard nut to crack getting into medical school. One would need to pass science at advanced levels, attend a competitive interview, and rely on God's grace to enter. Dad was aware of all these difficulties and challenges, so he became fervent in prayer, fasting and praying by the hour. Again, in his thoughts, was the family concern at home that he would not get into medical school and they had no certain financial means to keep him going. He kept up in spirit. Lo and behold, a letter came in announcing his admission into the School of Surgery, Royal College of Surgeons in Dublin in 1954. As told by dad, the college resumed in October on a dull early winter day but the atmosphere was stimulating. He made new friends and settled to work. The atmosphere remained challenging and was heavy laden with work. The first year exams came and the results were encouraging. He had passed with first class honors in biology and second honors in chemistry. This made the college appoint him student demonstrator in two subjects with payment monthly for services and with that of the small stipend from whom he became financially strong and confident. Coincidentally, his wife, Dr. Baba Funke Lake, my mom, was a student in the group, in his group. They met her, they met and later married and had four children. Again, this is typical of my dad, appointed to look after the group, but then had a roving eye on the students in his group and met my mom. In subsequent years, he passed with honors, respectively in ophthalmology and psychology. Dad was very active in rowing club and other college societies, such as the biological and dramatic groups. In 1961, he completed his medical training. Passed out. to begin the house jobs. 
which extended to three years. Which is started his training in ophthalmology at the Royal Victoria Hospital in Dublin. After working in different departments of the hospital, and between the High Alban and Old Street Hospital branches. That took the diploma final exams and passed out in 1964. His father was so excited. He had exclaimed, Viola had gone, Viola became a doctor, as he promised, and Viola had returned home. He said he would do it and he did it. He made his father very proud. Dad returned home in 1965 and then established himself in the profession. He acquired all the international touches and exposures with all modesty. He was employed a medical officer, special grade ophthalmology in the eye clinic, General Hospital Lagos. Dad had indicated that everything was made so difficult in there, but he enjoyed his work. During that time, Dr. Akiola Pierce was chief, and then Dr. Odulate late, and Akin Sheta were the other consultants. In late 1966, Professor Orisha Jolomi invited Dad to lecture ophthalmology at the Lagos Teaching Hospital, and he did this for some time before transferring his services to the Nigerian Army. Dr. Austin Peters, the director of medical service, in the armed forces invited him to join ranks and serve in the Nigerian army. He was in the office rank major and worked his way up to the rank of Lieutenant Colonel before being discharged. He was actively involved in conducting an examination of wounded soldiers, sorting them out for cosmetic repairs in Benin, Kaduna, Kanu, and at the military hospital in Lagos. As the war was coming to an end, that arranged his discharge from the army to accept the Commonwealth Scholarship, where he traveled to Canada, attended the University of Toronto, and the USA for more advanced training in ophthalmology. His long journey enabled him to acquire the listed qualifications, and in that zone words, a long journey that had a blessed end. That founded the eye hospital now known as St. Edmund's Clinics and Eye Hospital. St. Edmund's has been a place where young ophthalmologists have been able to hone their skills. It has had over four decades of impacting lives. He was the immediate past chairman of the Board of Governors and a member of the Board of Trustees at the Eye Bank for its storing site in Nigeria. That in his later years was very socially active Loved to hang out with some of his friends, including Dr. Bolaji Ajeni Fuja, Lawyer S.P. Joseph, Dr. Buckner, Mr. D'Souza, and Professor Duncan at the Yoruba Tennis and Metropolitan Club. He was, a, he was a member of the Solidra Club. We have very fond memories. And recently, even mid March, I remember where we had nights of drinking. Hennessy brandy, and he's smoking his cigars. We miss him. That prayer at his 80th birthday, I remember, was of note. And let me just read it out to you because it showed what he kept in his heart and how he acted. Oh God, my creator, today my heart is full of praise and thanks to you for all your mercies to me my family, and my friends. I thank you, Lord, for accepting me as I am, for having Jesus in my life, and I ask for the forgiveness of all my sins. Grant, I beseech you, O Lord, that my life may continue to glorify you and testify to your matchless love and overcoming power. In Jesus' name, I have prayed. This was his prayer 
and his continued spread. That is survived by his children, Shivon, Elion, Ayo, Harriman, Eamon Labadi Akiosho, myself, Grace, Pepe, Orimon Lade, and Eniton, Dayo, Yenuga. I miss him dearly. We miss him dearly. He was an inspiration to us all. A kind man, a generous man, full of wisdom. Rest in peace. Rest in peace, Dad. Thank you, Labode, for that um, emotional laden um, biography for that. And uh, my prayers that may the Almighty God bless the legacy of your dad in Jesus' name. You're not saying amen. <laughs> Sorry, I, I, it's a digression. I was not going to hang, I was, not, I was going to reject this anchoring because uh, I'm an in law to one them. I will have been um, shedding tears like what it was there. Uh, I will try and hold myself here. <laughs> so let's move ahead and we take the next lesson, the second lesson, please, by one of Papa's um, daughter. That's Shobimin Elion. Is she on? Oh, sorry, she won Elion. It's your time now, please. The second lesson, please. Second Corinthians 4. 7 to 18. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. We are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus may be manifest in our body. For we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake, that the life of Jesus also may manifest in our mortal flesh. So then, death is working in us, but life in you. And since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believe, and therefore I spoke, we also believe, and therefore speak, knowing that he who raised up the Lord Jesus will also raise us up with Jesus and will present us with you. For all things are for your sake, that grace, having through the many, may cause thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inner man is being renewed day by day. For a light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for these things which are seen, sorry, for the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Here ends the reading of the word of God. Let's be the reading of God's word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for taking the second lesson. We're on page six, item eight, and it's time to pay a tribute to our departed Papa. And then please, we are on the list. We have is it four, four, five persons here. And please, we are going to be very, very uh, distributed time. Please, um, two minutes will be okay. 
am I am I in the holder? Two minutes. So I'll just call it in the holder. We have it here. May I please invite Muiwa Majekodumi, please, for for his tribute, please. Thank, thank you uh, very much. The earliest memories I have of my uncle were in England in the 60s. And um, what I remember most of all was his visits to a house in Hendon in his um, tiny car. Um, I think it was a Morris, was a Morris Minor, um, beige. Um, and then uh, I came back to Nigeria Less memories of, of the house at uh, Connell, Connell Street, from Connell Street to Marine Road, if I remember correctly. And before St. Edmunds, there was Quantaqualia. I think Quantaqualia became St. Edmunds. My, I lost my father uh, when I was 12. Um, and I didn't know my father too well because he was a diplomat traveling regularly. And um, Okibela became my father, a father figure to me. He became like a father figure and a big brother. Who was he? Stoic, strong, ebullient, philosophical, contemplative, warm, focused, ever generous, patient, welcoming, a lover of family and life. He loved his sisters. He loved his sisters to bits. And one thing about Okubela, he never forgets what seeds were sown into his life by his sisters. He was so close to them, his um, sister and Tiani and my late mother. To be honest with you, I am not sure whose death is more painful, my mother's or my uncle's. My mother was sick and I knew she was going. Okubela, I remember the weekend Okubela died, I was feeling very extremely funny and I'd been thinking I should go and see him, but I was afraid of the corona virus and I know he hadn't been feeling too well so we had and the, the advice was that we should keep away from adults so I I didn't go but his death was a, a shock to me he was funny he was witty he was serious a great raconteur never a dull moment with him he was my uncle and friend at one time, we had a little quarrel, I think sometime in the 80s. I don't know what caused it. And there was a lot of tension between us for about 18 months. So there was this particular time I traveled to, I traveled to Kaduna, and I bought a sword for him. And I remember that day, I took it to meet him at um, St. Edmunds. And when I presented the sword to him, he looked at me and said, we were, we were at daggers drawn, and I dropped my sword. And he hugged me. And ever since then, we've never had one single quarrel. My uncle influenced me musically, um, from high life to jazz. And there's always one song he was talking about. I'll soon finish. There's one song he was always talking about, which happened to be his uh, anthem. It's a, Frank, a song by Frank Sinatra, titled, I Did It My Way. And that was, his theme. Each time we met, we spoke about that song. And let me read it out. The word lyrics. It says, and now the end is near. And so I face the final curtain. My friends, I'll say it clear. I'll state my case of which I'm certain. I've lived a life that's full. I travel each and every highway. But much more than this, I did it my way. Regrets, I've had a few, but then again, too few to mention, I did what I had to do and saw it through without exemption. I planned each charted course, each careful step along the, the byway, and much more than this, I did it my way. Yes, there were times, I'm sure you knew, where I bit off more than I could chew, or through it all, when there was doubt, I ate it up and spit it out. I faced it all and I stood tall and I did it my way. I've loved, laughed and cried. I've had my fill, my share of losing. 
and now as tears subside, I find it all so amusing. To think I did all that, and may I say, not in a shy way. Oh no, not me, I did it my way. For what is a man, what has he got? If not himself, then he has not. To say all the things he truly feels are not the words of one who kneels. The record shows I took the blows, but I did it my way. For God took him his way. May his soul rest in peace. God bless. Thank you, Mr. Matakodomi. It's my pleasure to invite Dr. Chizoba Onoche for our treatment. Long before I started working at St. Edmund's, I used to admire Dr. Akinosho from afar when I would see him at various ophthalmology fora and was pleased when I got to know him personally as I became a doctor in his hospital. I have learned a lot from his simplicity, his humility, generosity, and steadfastness to his core values and belief in the almighty God. I will always be grateful to God to have been your friend while you were still here on earth. He was a great father, teacher, and friend. He was a fine gentleman, even in his old age. He made me feel at home in St. Edmunds and always encouraged me to be a better version of myself. Alas, I was like a child born to a father when no one was expecting me. I am happy to be counted among the many children you have impacted and counseled, giving me the arsenal to be able to weather the storms of this life. Papa, you are sorely missed and you have left us quietly, just like your gentle self. But I would rather take solace that you are resting happy in the bosom of the Lord. Adieu. Till we meet again, Papa. Thank you for being my friend. Thank you. We'll now call on one of Papa's daughters, Grace Pepe Orimalade. Please, it's your time, please. There are dads and there are daddies. I'll say that our dad excelled them all. He was truly, it was truly a blessing to have him as a father. He taught us principles and values. He taught us to accept others regardless of who they are. He taught us to believe the best in others. He was a friend to all. A quintessential gentleman indeed. The doctor with the bow tie. He was very kind and generous to all, even to a fault. And this made him a prime target to vultures who sought to devour him and his essence along his journey in the school of life. His gentle, quiet, and accommodating personality was exploited by the few who did not value and treat him right. Yet, this very nature was the wind that enabled him to sail successfully across the ocean of life. Nonetheless, he was loved and cherished by many, too numerous to mention. He is now at rest with the one who loves him unconditionally. Daddy, you are now enjoying eternity in perfect peace with the one who truly, truly loves you and has called you back home, the Lord Jesus Christ. I leave you with his favorite saying, 
all will be well all is well god bless you all amen Dearly. amen thank you grace for that and then the house now i invite who delay Daddy, you're now enjoying our, our new tea. you. Sorry, our hand you know. I'm sorry. Please, it's time for your own tribute. Is she, is she here? Okay, hold it. Is it hold it there or hold it? Sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> Just follow me, please. My beloved sisters, my big brother, my confidant, my true friend and soulmate, you surprised me dearly. I was shocked and amazed, knowing that you gave me all the best of your last days in the deep parables you shared. But I just couldn't understand that those saying we are musical from departure from our mother's head. You left me so early. Just when I thought we would celebrate yet another beautiful birthday so soon. So, this is indeed too much to bear. Through you, I learned so many things that I never could imagine was possible and true to be learned in such a short time. You are a real man, a man of wisdom, strength, and love. You displayed humility and gesture that leaves many with a beautiful picture that is almost so impossible to forget. You were a true example of a father. You loved every single child you had, regardless, and even took others as your own without discrimination. A good friend you were to your friends, a superhero to your sons in law. Worthy as a husband for a woman. What's more beautiful than that? You are overqualified in every aspect of integrity, humility, responsibility, and reliability. Words can't truly really express what you mean to me. I will truly miss our love, my love. It was natural and original, nothing compared to it. I will always remember you and love you as if you never left till we met again to part no more. Rest in peace. Rest in the presence and comfort of the Almighty God, my darling. Sunreo, Omo Afiabere Gunyo, Ki Oshikama Baje, Sunre, with love. Odi, as you always called me. Thank you. Is Sam Hellion Horn 
It's your turn, yeah. the fifth tribute from Sam Hellion. To, um, to do this on behalf of all the audience. No audio. Okay, please, Sam, please speak. Um, all can right. everyone hear me? Okay. Um, you may, you may make it louder so we can't hear, so they can hear you. Uh, this is a tribute on behalf of all the grandchildren. All right. Yeah. Louder um, still. Grandpa was like a second father to a lot of us, um, not just to me. Um, that's myself, my brothers, and um, David, Philip, Auntie Pepe's children, Uncle Abadi's children. And he was, he was more like a second dad to us. Um, it's a painful and unexpected loss. Um, however, if there was a life worth celebrating, he definitely is. Um, from his accomplishments, which Uncle Abode has elaborated on, to um, the way he raised my, um, my aunties, my uncles, to be uh, upstanding members of the society. Um, it's really an exemplary life. Uh, our recollection of Grandad as kids is him sharing chocolates in plates and only one person to share around to everyone. Grandpa never ate alone. Um, he instilled the ethos of hard work. He labored on the point that with hard work, nothing is unachievable. And he used his life as an example. Um, kept on telling us that his parents couldn't afford medical school, but here he is a doctor. It means if you put your mind to anything, it's definitely achievable. He has a, there's a passage that he always, read, he always used to read to me, Psalm 2 verse 8. It says, ask of me and I'll make the inheritance your choice. And he always used to tell me, Sam, God says, ask of me, and I'll give you whatever it is you want. Um, I really wish I could ask God to bring Grandpa back. Um, for me and the grandchildren, we want to save our white Grandpa, and we really hope that we can live up to the highest standards you've set for us. Um, still love and miss you, and thank you. Thank you, Sam. May God keep all the children, grandchildren for us in Jesus' name. And God keep their parents too. And then the last but not the least, may I invite Godwin Metu for his tribute for Papa. You're welcome, sir. Um. Peace of the Lord of heaven, you know, as you know, my Lord Jesus Christ. So many to say about Doctor. Time will fail us to say much about Doctor. My tribute to Doctor Edmond Abiola Akinoshu will be, will be hinged on his, this words of Apostle Paul from the book of 1 Chronicles 9 18 to 22, with special emphasis on. 20 and 22 that says, And unto the Jews I became as a Jew that I might gain the, gain the Jews. To them that are under law, to them that are under the law, as under the law, that I might gain them that are under the law. To the weak became as weak, that I might gain the weak. I am made all things to all men, that I might by all means. Dr. Edmond Abiola Akidosho become all things to all men. He might not have carried the crop, the Bible, in the street, but he preached the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ with his lifestyle. For sure, we will miss his greatness, his gentleness, his humility. In short, one of my cousins, Sam and Sam, do say that. Dr. Edmund is a complete and perfect gentleman to the core. He was a burden bearer. He, he is ever ready and willing to assist. Praise the mighty Jesus. We will miss him. 
you can you, uh, his own godly advice in respect, irrespective of your age or social class. I can remember my brothers in his ways of about Doctor Edmond uh, if I in Chukwu area. He said, "Doctor came down to my level in my first meeting and started a long life, a lifelong fellowship with friendship with me. Ever since then, he has been my supportive." In even in my wooing of his daughter, his first daughter, he also is my he is my senior brother's location to Lagos and made him an unpaid uh, caretaker in one of his properties in Kitu, Salma House, giving him a training in property management. Can I ever forget his generosity towards my late parents, my family, and everyone? Recently. When I made a visit to him at Omore, he personally took my, my daughter, my children, on a tour of his residence. I will conclude with this, I will conclude this tribute with this charge from Apostle Paul. In the book of 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 to 14. 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 to 14. But I will not have you to be ignorant and brethren, concerning them that are saved, which are asleep, that ye may sorrow not. Even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so then also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Edmund, Dr. Edmund Abiola Kinosho is not dead, but sleeping at the bosom of the Lord. And we wake up in the resurrection morning at the Lord's foot. In John 11 25, John 11 25, Jesus Christ declared that he is the resurrection and life. And anyone who finds him will live forever. With even after dying, he found Jesus. Our testimony this, af this afternoon is that Dr. Edmond Abiola Akido should find Jesus and is saved. My question to you, brethren, is will you find him? Will you find him? Will you give your life to him as to be saved and secure your eternity in heaven? Remember this. Today is doctor's burial. Tomorrow might be me or you. Praise the Lord. I end by saying, stay in Christ to stay safe. May the Lord bless you all. Praise the Lord. We are now preach. Sermon so will take one of another of my papa's favorites and hymns. How great thou have, then we took this up. Let's try this place. Mm -hmm.
Bible talks about prolonging our days is possible, but ultimately, man must go. You can't prevent that the day of death. Everyone will die. The great, the small, the rich, the poor, the elite, the uneducated, everyone from the general to the pauper on the street, everyone must answer when that call comes. What should be our attitude to death? What should be our attitude? Since we know it's not something we can escape. No one can dodge this day. That day must come. Number one, we should understand that death is not the end of a man. It is the end of a race and the beginning of another. There is an earthly race which is transient, is temporary. It has a beginning, it has an ending. But there is another race which is eternal. It has a beginning but no end. It begins whenever they pass from this life. And then he enters, enters into unending ages. Ages of ages. When three trillion years have come and gone, eternity has just begun. So it's important to give much thought to the second race, which is eternal. That should be our attitude to death. Number two, before you die, determine to live a full life. A lot of people get careless with their lives and they die before the actual time. It's possible to die before the actual time. It's possible to die the exact day you should die. It's also possible to extend it beyond the day you should die. It's all in the Bible, but it's meant to be a short message. You can die before your time. You can die on the exact day. You can die beyond the achieve that date. But ultimately, death will still come and come. Because there must be a translation, there must be a living this world for you to enter into eternity. So you must take care of yourself before you die. Live a full life and live a long life. Live to the exact point of your departure, the day you should leave. Or if you can, by your faith and good works, extend it beyond the day. But don't mess up your time of extension. You succeed in moving God to extend it. Don't mess up the time of your extension and do the wrong things. Use it to affect many more lives. Hallelujah. Live a full life. Full life. Choose to live a full life. Dr. Edward Abiola Akesho lived a full life. He poured himself into everyone that came across his path. He poured himself, not just what he had, he literally poured himself into people. He touched the downtrodden, the rich, the poor, the high and the mighty, he touched everyone. I'd like to tell you 15 things I observed in him. 15 things. That we all can learn from. He has gone. We are rejoicing and celebrating because of legacies, because of impact. Fifteen things. Number one was a very humble man. Was a very humble man. Number two that you will easily peep in him is his kindness and generosity. His kindness and generosity. Number three, he searched for God and found him. I spent a lot of time with him every time I went to fellowship meetings at St. Edmund's Clinic and I asked to. And after the fellowship, or before the fellowship, I sit, sat before him, and then you just see wisdom flowing out. A man that searched for God some people come to this land, they don't even search for God. It's a matter of fact, they believe there is no God. 
And some says, there may be a God, but I don't know it. He searched for God. Some, on the other hand, searched for God and found him. Others searched for God and ended up with the devil in their search. They were searching for God and ended up in the devil's house. They wanted to understand mysteries that surround his life and ended up in a hot season. This man searched for God and found God. Number four, he loved God. You don't need to spend 15 minutes with him to discover that. He loved God. Number five, he was very hard working till old age. Very hard working. Diligent man. You might call him a workaholic. Work so hard in the age. Number six, he was a man of vision and wisdom. A man of vision and wisdom. Number seven, he did not despise the lowly. A man who did not despise anyone lower than him. Even those on the streets. Number eight, he maintained the relationship to the last minute. Please, we can't hear Please. Can I go over that again? Number one, he was a very humble man. Number two, he was kind and generous. Number three, he searched for God and found him. Number four, he loved God. Number five, he was very hardworking till holy age. Number six, he was a man of vision and wisdom. I put that two together, vision and wisdom. Number seven, he did not despise the lowly. Number eight, he maintained relationship. He's not the one given to starting a relationship and bringing it up with you. It takes time, except you drop in by yourself. And there are cases he will look for you if you drop him. He maintained relationship. Number eight, I think it's number eight now. Are you following me? Number eight, okay. He loved his family. He loved his family. Number nine, he was a man of faith. He believed nothing was impossible. I, as a preacher, will sit be before him and will be telling me, Afa, there is nothing possible with God. There is nothing impossible. There is nothing this our God cannot do. He will tell you, I have seen him. He has done so many things for me. Just ask him. He talked with such, he talked with such simplicity about God doing something for man. He was a man of faith. Now, man, Ten? Is it ten? He respected and he honored servants of God. He respected and honored servants of God. If a servant of God, Pastor God, you know what I'm talking about. Once he knows you're a pastor, he gives you respect. He honors servants of God. Whether you're very old, you're very young, or you're a small boy. Once he knows, that the hand of God is upon you. He respected men of God. He honored servants of God. This will interest you. The next one, he was not in competition with anybody. I sat with him many times. Instead of competition, he did things by intuition. No comparison, no competition with anybody. He did things by intuition. In his times of meditation, whatever comes up in his heart is what he follows. The man who followed his heart, never competing with anyone. He enjoyed the company of people. He enjoyed the company of people and he will make you feel at home and relax before him. A silent achiever, not a noise maker. A silent achiever. So many things God are using to do, but you will never hear these things, not big noise about those things. Except you observe and ask him questions. The last one, which should not be the last, 
is that in love reading the Bible, I don't know if anybody observed that again. He loved reading the Bible. Most of the time, I met him reading his Bible. And he would draw my attention to some scripture. I said, this is what I found today in the Bible. He said, this book is wonderful. This book, you find something new every time you read it. He was a lover of the Bible. He touched everyone that came to him, as far as I know. And this has spanned 25 years. Since 1995, I came in contact with him. These are things that I found in his life. So as we are here today, don't live for yourself. If you live for yourself, the day of death will not be pleasant and welcoming. When you die, if I should begin to smell it, sorrow will love you. If you live for yourself, if you live for yourself and when you die, people will not be excited to gather in to honor you. They will do it religiously to please people. Live for God and live to be a blessing to mankind. What should be our attitude to death? Number three point plan to live very long, but live as if death is close. Live ready for eternity. Plan to live very long, but live as if death is close. Live ready for eternity. What should be our attitude to death? The last point, number four. Death is a graduation day. If you have put your life in the hands of Jesus, the Savior, then death becomes your graduation day. If you put your hands in the hands of Jesus, and you make him your Lord, and you make him your sin, you will never be afraid of the day of death. You will excitedly Walk over to that point, boom, you are now gone. And then you will meet the Lord. The Bible said to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. To be present with the Lord. Once we depart from here and we are put our hands in the hands of Jesus, immediately we are present with the Lord. As I close this message, I want us to rededicate our life to Jesus Christ. No, many of us have done that. Give your life to Jesus at one time or the other. Can we take a moment to dedicate our life? To say, for the rest of my life, Jesus, have your way. The rest of my life, please, Lord, take control. Don't let me break your heart again, Lord. Let me be a pleasure to your heart. Let me bring you joy all the days of my life. Shall we bow our heads as we pray? Talk to the Lord. Surrender everything. Your spirit, your soul, and body. Everything that you have and own. Give them all up to God to have authority over them because he's the rightful and true owner of whatever you think you possess. He gave you the right to be able to possess those things. He gave you the grace. He gave you the wisdom. He gave you the power. He gave you the strength. He gave you the anointing. Hand over everything to him. Even your wisdom, your intellectual power. Hand over everything that God may continue to use you for his glory. Say, Lord, I dedicate all I have and all I am to you. I will dedicate all I have and all I am to you. I surrender all to you. Take control of my life. Take control of everything. Let my last days be more pleasant than my beginnings. Let the end be better than the beginning. Let the rest of my life be the best time that I ever need. In the name of Jesus, all that I could not do before till now, Lord, give me grace to begin to do. Give me grace to begin to do. Thank you, dear Father. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. So, Father, I've given your word. May these words have eternal impact. May these words make new persons out of us. May these words release grace to run the rest of the race. Lord, send us from here with greater grace to do more exploits in life and to live a life that is pleasing to you. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. I wish I had a very, very good evening. Amen. God bless you all.
this time to pray for the family. Let us bow our hearts as we commit all of the issues to God's of him and heaven. The word of God says that eternal God is our refuge. And all the needs are the everlasting hands. Let's pray that the Almighty God will keep Papa's legacy. These are the legacies of Papa Kishu. These are his fruits. They will carry on this name in all generations. And we pray that. The Almighty God will make them to be much more fulfilled and greater, do greater exploits in life than their father. And as Papa's as carry on that name, they will take that name to the ends of the earth. That's including grandchildren. And I want uh, Dr. Hayo and the Sister to come and stand. How please? And let's pray for them as a speak, as a representative of their siblings that are not here physically. Please come and stand and let's pray for them. Can we just, just stretch our hands and pray for them? That God will sustain them. God will keep them. The Lord will comfort them. One thing about death is that death is not even a spectrum of age, of, of it's not about age and about numbers. You can still be hungry and still be missed so passionately. Pray that God will lengthen their own lives too. That's they will carry on the legacy of Papa. Shall be well with them and their husband and their family. And use them as a point of contact to their siblings that are, that, that, that are watching by, I mean, to, not online, that are only physically, and all of Papa's parents' children. None of them will be an offender. None will be a, a, a vagabond. None of Papa's heritage will ever be a criminal. That name will not be known for evil. They will call his name for God's glory and God's virtue. Let's pray. Let's pray for them. Let's pray that God will let their lives. God will unite them. We see all where anytime that the father or the mother goes, there is great disunity in the family. At this time, God will make them to always rally around themselves more and more. That love and that passion that I knew in Papa Bisho that made him to love his family and children so much, that, that, that love will go on amongst them. They will be united in spirit, in soul, in mind. God will keep them. And let's pray for all of Papa's in laws, all his Papa's, uh, Papa's uh, siblings that are still alive, all in laws, directly and directly, that the world will continue to unite us all in the love of Christ. That at the end of our own journey, we will be celebrated. Our life will be a life of testimony. Thank you, Father. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Let's be seated now. Almighty God, who has bound together your elect in one communion and fellowship. In the body of your Son Jesus Christ, grant us the old church being represented here and those in paradise may be in light and in peace perpetually. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Grant that all those you have saved by death and resurrection of Christ may die to sin and rise to the newness of life, and through your grace. May to walk through the grace of God in your joyful celebration. Lord, in your mercy, grant us that who are still in this pilgrimage, particularly all of Papa's children, and who walk yet in faith, that your Holy Spirit will lead us in all and true holiness and in righteousness all the days of our lives. Lord, in your mercy, grant your people here and all those who represent, grant us 
a pardon of our peace, that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you in quiet mind and in all holiness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Grant to those who mourn and comfort all, particularly all their conscious, their well wishers, all of us, all of us children, the grandchildren, anybody connected with this family, and all that are here as you come to mourn with them. That you will give us the unity that we deserve and the confidence that is your father in care. And casting all our grief on you, you may give us sustenance of your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Help us as we pray in the midst of all things we cannot understand and believe and trust in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin and the resurrection to life everlasting. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Grant us grace to entrust ourselves, particularly the departed Chief Dr. Edmund Abila Kiyosho, in unfailing love, receive him into your arms of your mercy, remember him, and particularly all his great works and legacy, according to your favor which you have given through his children now. Lord, in your mercy, commit yourself to God's hands before we depart here. Like the preacher have said, the day of death is inescapable. It can be prolonged. It can be drawn near. It can even be instant. Pray that you will live a life that will have meaning. The real reason of humanity is that men always don't want to remember that their life is for a meaning and they will give account before the Almighty God. One thing I don't find too acceptable when we come to service like this is our religiosity and pretense. Hmm. The dead that kills your mate, someone who is even more older than you, is also giving you a proof that one day is going to be your turn, whether you like it or not. Prepare to meet your God. Pray that you will live a life for his glory. Pray that wherever you have fallen short of his glory, God will restore you. Wherever you are, under the sound of his voice, as God is over, we are even watching online, pray that your life will be a testimony, a blessing, a solution, a reference point to your generation. Your, your, your life will not be a byword, a dead dimension of who he is. Pray that as we Go now to the computer, God will go with us. And as we go to our own, the spirit and cause presence will not depart from us. Once again, pray for our past children, particularly those that are here, who have been doing a lot of active work to make sure today is being to be Dr. Hayo Hariman and Mrs. Adidayo. Oh, you know that. The Lord will keep their homes. God will strengthen them that all joy in as, as we have come to bear about today, the Lord will keep them also in life, in peace, in health. As they are here to represent our past heritage, God will keep them in the unity of peace. Commit all things to your hands. Lord, in your mercy, the Lord's prayer reverently, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on heart, at this time. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. Let's forgive us to turn against us. Lord, for your kingdom, for thy is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for allowing today to be the day you have made, and we rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you for the life of Chief Dr. Edmund Abiola Kyoshu, who you have called to yourself. And we thank you that in blessed assurance, we know that it's with you. We thank you for confirming this, particularly through the sermon of your minister, that truly in this lifetime he has reiterated with your word, and the word that has saved him, and 
baptized him into life, will save us all through Jesus' name. And as we have come here to bring, commit him to one of the hearts, may all things also work together for our good in Jesus' name. Thank you for how far you have led us. As we depart from here to the commenter, please may all things work for our good in Jesus' name. And we once again commit the past legacy and family and hope to your hands, strengthen them, keep them, unite them. How good and how pleasant it is for bringing to put in unity. It is like the oil poured upon the head of Aaron, the priest. It falls upon from his breast to the end of his garment, and there you, Lord, command his blessing. May your mercy and blessing be commanded from our children in Jesus' name. And all of us here, and all in us, and all of us connected with my mom and the other. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. I want to say the prayer of grace together. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all and forever. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. We are here to celebrate the calling celebration of life. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. Please have the word of thanks. I'd like to uh, give the vote of thanks. Firstly, I'd like to thank everyone that has shown support and love and bestowed love to my dad. Also, thanks to everyone that has signed in. And if you are still persistent, and if you are still on, you are persistent through the technology. Thank you. We thank you for the, we thank the clergy, uh, the falls and garden staff, the decorator, we thank the St. Edmund's Hospital staff, that's personal staff, Auntie OG, his driver Kabiru, CCAE, for looking after him and taking care of him all three. I'd like to thank my sisters, um, especially Dr. Ayo and Sister Daya. Sister Daya. Uh, they've been on the ground doing most of the heavy lifting. I'd like to thank all my cousins, relatives, and the current attendees in person there. Thank you for taking the risk coming out. I'd like to thank all the families of my sisters for putting up with the numerous Zoom meetings trying to keep us in the loop. Uh, and keep, keep this the project or the funeral going. I'd like to thank my friends, uh, cousins, relatives that have supported and made this day possible. Especially, I'd like to thank my lovely wife and my son for putting up with me and um, my emotional state. And the, Us. Thank you for loving that. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for paying respect. We appreciate it and we love you back. Thank you. All right, we are going to rise up for the withdrawal hymn. Now, thank we all our God.
guide us when heartless and guard us through all ills in this world and the next.
doing that? Two of you should be here. Two of, gently. 
Gently, 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 gently. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Please, oh, please hold this. How do you want to I want to 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 Uh, auntie, uh, sister, you go with there. Sir, mm. I need you. Mm. Oh, my God, sister. Yeah, The family, mm. Don't worry. Other people can stand. I need to maintain social distance. Social? Yes. Okay. We are on page 9. The Lord be with you. And also with you. I had a great uh, revelations 21 from verse 3 through 7. I had a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said to me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a task of the fountain of water of life freely. He that overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, he shall be my son. Please let's take the hymn. Through the love of God our Savior. Mm -hmm. Through the love of God our Savior. Oh, 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 oh,
this well. Precious is the blood that healed us, perfect is the grace that sealed us, strong the hand stretch for to shield us. All must be well through, through, we pass through tribulation all will be well as he sought a full salvation all all is well happy still in god confiding fruitful if in christ abiding only through the spirit's guiding all must be well. We, we expect a bright tomorrow. All will be well. Faith can sing through days of sorrow. All, all is well. All Father's love relying, Jesus every need supplying, in our living, in our dying, all must be well. You can lower the casket now. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we come at this time to commit the body and the mortal remains of our brother to the earth. We take comfort in your word which says, For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, <clears throat> we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. We therefore encourage ourselves with these words. As we commit this body into the ground, we know that this is not a hopeless situation. We do it with hope and with faith. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. All right. We look for the resurrection in the last day and the appearing of the Lord Jesus at whose second coming he shall judge the world. When the earth and sea shall give up the dead, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with, the, with them in the clouds, and then shall come to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your sting? O grave, where is your victory? For as much as the spirit of our diseased brother and father, Edmund Abiola Kyocho, has returned to God, who gave it, we therefore commit the body 
of Edmond Abiola Kiyocho to the ground and to the dust. From heart to heart, from dust to dust, from ashes to ashes. In the name of the Father, Amen. Son, Amen. and Holy Ghost. Amen. 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 Invite the doctor Dr. and then you do the needful now. From heart to heart. From heart to heart. From dust to dust. From ashes to ashes. Amen. From heart to heart. From dust to dust. From ashes to ashes. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The roots. The roots. The roots. Mm. Okay. Mm? Okay. Or is it something? No. Okay. Any other member of the family who wants to present? Is there another member of the family? Thank you. Hold on. Thank you very much. From heart to heart. From dust to dust. From ashes to ashes. From heart to heart, from dust to dust, from ashes to ashes. to heart, from dust to dust, from ashes to ashes. Okay. Okay. Oh, give God glory. I know, I know. Finally, things uh, Heart to heart, from dust to dust, and from ashes to ashes. The name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen and Amen. Okay. Please come, sir. Three times. Gently, sir. From heart to heart, from dust to dust, from ashes to ashes. Amen. From heart to heart, from dust to dust, from ashes to ashes. All right, shall we pray? And then we share the benediction. Father God, we thank you for the privilege we have to witness this day. May the legacies of your son continue to live on. May our lives continue to be impacted by the legacies he left behind. May all who are alive go from strength to strength. 
We pray that there will be no chains of untimely death. Amen. We break off such chains in the name of Jesus. Amen. That your people that are standing here and all those who are watching online, all our families, everyone will live up to full age. Amen. No one will die before his time. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus, those who may be sick in this place today, Lord, as they are departing from this place, they enter their houses, Lord. I pray that they won't find that sickness anymore. Amen. I cause the root of sickness that can take a man's life. Amen. I cause the root of sickness that can, that can take a woman's life. Amen. Anyone that is here today or watching online, you will not die before your time. Amen. I command that disease to expire in their body. I command that sickness to leave you now. In the name that's above every name, Jesus Christ, those who have been trailed by the spirit of death in your dreams, in actual life, you, you, you sense it, you see it, you feel it, you feel as if death is near. From today, I command that death to depart from you. Amen. Depart from your vicinity. Amen. Depart from your place of work. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Everyone that came here with sorrow, crying, Oh God, they shall return with the joy of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Every member of the family here and abroad, oh God, you will comfort everyone. Lord, please comfort everyone in the name of the Lord Jesus. As we are departing this place, Lord, journey message to everyone. Protection on the way in the name of Jesus. Good things, Lord, let it begin in everybody's life. No bad thing after this barrier in the name of the Lord Jesus. No chains of affliction, no chains of bad news. It is counsel for everyone here and those who are watching online in the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Let's share the benediction together, everyone. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forever. Amen and amen. Thank you, sir. I'm going to me. i <laughs> uh, understand that it's only once. You see that it, they are uh, yeah. So since it was done there, mm. yeah, the family is only one that can give us an answer, so we, we can pass it. Uh, you will need this if you are making announcement. Because of the online. Uh, to speak into it, so uh, them to hear them. Okay. All right. Just to say a big thank you to everyone for coming today. Um, thank you also um, to those who waited online very patiently whilst we sorted out the technical issues. Um, due to the Lagos State restrictions. Um, the occasion ends here, um, but um, the memories will continue to live on in our hearts. Um, we will just encourage that if you haven't yet left a tribute online, then please um, go on the memorial site and leave a tribute um, if you haven't already done so. Uh, but thank you once again, everyone, and um, wish you a safe journey as you go back home. Thank you. Yes. Um, we have refreshments uh, laid out for everyone just as you exit, please. So please don't leave without uh, picking one up. Thank you once again. <laughs>